yeah good morning students uh, welcome back so uh, we are discussing uh, the series of traditional economic systems and uh, the modes of exchanges in this traditional economic systems so so far in our earlier videos we covered so uh, barter system next uh, jajamani system jajamani system and uh, ceremonial exchange now we are going to uh, discuss about the remaining three types of uh, exchanges in simple societies or traditional societies that is uh, you can see that so reciprocity redistribution and trade so this three uh, in single shot because uh, this three was given by uh, uh, same person so we will discuss in single shot so first of all who gave this concept karl uh, polony karl polony in his text the great transformation the great transformation so he discussed about three types of exchanges in simple societies later sahelins and services in his text stone age economics stone age economics so he also supported the uh, kind of uh, the kind of uh, exchanges given by the carlo polayani especially he was much interested in the reciprocity concept given by carlo polayani so we will see uh, what are the concepts given by carlo polayani means so three modes of exchanges oh, first one is nothing but reciprocity second one is nothing but redistribution third one is nothing but trade so he further divided the trade into three varieties gift trade administrative trade as well as market trade so if the examiner ask you the same question like uh, discuss the simple uh, various modes of exchanges by karl polayani sahil and services you have to uh, write uh, this con uh, this question next uh, we will move into the uh, what do you mean by reciprocity so reciprocity is nothing but exchanging of goods and services between the units of same kind such as individuals households or kinship groups so here giving and taking of uh, goods and services uh, if it takes place uh, between uh, the parties of similar kind the same kind of parties such as individuals so chief to chief or within a household that means parental to offsprings or offsprings to parental or grandparents to uh, you know uh, grandchildren kinship groups all the members of a clan member all the lineage members so all the patri members so this kind of exchange generally we call as a reciprocity reciprocity means so it occurs between uh, if uh, if the some person is given uh, a gift or good to the another person the given giver and the receiver receiver also uh, reciprocate by giving the another good maybe uh, it is the not same or delayed also so so this reciprocity generally occurs by seeing this one individuals household and kinship groups there is already uh, the members of the reciprocity they were already in a relationship that means this this takes place between the members or uh, household uh, household members or kinship groups that already some form of relationship existing between them so that means uh, it takes place between the already pre, uh, members already having pre existing social relationships so it is based on the kinship or among the kinsmen or between the different uh, friends between the friends also so here you can see the major object of reciprocity it is neither profit nor gain it is the only uh, thing is to reinforce already existing relations so if you neglected a relationship without uh, giving and taking then it will be end very soon but to maintain the already existing relationship so these simple societies follows reciprocity kind of thing that means the main function of the reciprocity is nothing but reaffirmation of the existing relationships between the parties 
so reciprocity here however you can to, you have to remember one point reciprocity does not create any kind of new ties or new relations but it serves to maintain the existing relationships so that is the key point you have to remember in the reciprocity the general kind of examples we can quote are or uh, hospitality if some of our relative come to our home so we will uh, serve that relative uh, we will serve that relative with all material kind of things uh, this kind of sharing if uh, some meat is there they will be distributed that meat to the kinsman when i want that kinsman got the hunt he will distribute it to the first party this is the way sharing help free gift and generosity so these are all the examples we can discuss under the reciprocity concept you can say these are all the uh, best described examples under reciprocity without having any profit and loss concept so this is all about reciprocity so next we will move into the so i have one question if somebody uh, one of your relatives for say your mother's brother or your mother's brother's children if they visited your home what you will do do you expect any kind of money for providing food for them for, uh, for providing uh, you know uh, what what we call space for them so for lodging and boarding facilities that uh, you provided as part of uh, you provided in your home for that will you charge or not so if you don't charge that we will see as a reciprocity so that is called uh, reciprocity now we will move into the second concept redistribution so redistribution according to polony so it is generally occurs in chiefdom societies so many lineages comes under so lineage li many lineages comes under uh, one clan this clan is added by chief that we call as a chiefdom so that means here there is a centralized authority which govern the members of all their clan members so this land communally available the communally available land distributed among the different different lineages people by the chief of that clan so these people after harvest is over or uh, uh, at any period of time they will pay uh, tribute for the chief uh, the chief of their clan so this clan member he will retain some of the portion he received as part of tribute and remaining share or remaining thing he will uh, again spend on the society only for their kinsmen only this type of uh, things first the all the goods are pooled at the center and later from that center to all other parts it is distributed in a society that we call as a redistribution so the redistribution that means uh, paying tribute to the centralized authority it is uh, it may be some societies voluntary some other societies it may be involuntary that means strictly they have to pay mandatorily they have to pay otherwise they will get some kind of punishments and penalties so the societies such as uh, barin and uh, burin and trobriander islanders in Mal uh, malaysia they follow involuntary tribute or involuntary payment of the tribute for the centralized chief that is called chiefdom so some other society within the same geography the chiefdoms of malaysia and polynesia apart from that burin and tribe uh, trobrianders they follow uh, the tribute is voluntary so that is the interest of the person who has to uh, who has feel that they are paying or they are contributing for their own clan member only own clan chief only in that situation he will he, will, he, he is ready to pay that tribute that situation is called as a voluntary it is the personalized uh, opinion personalized decision whether he will pay or not but not not at all yet it is a socially enforced custom so this is called redistribution story redistribution is nothing but the centralized authority collect the goods from all the members and he will stay that some of the good uh, he will uh, uh, retain some of the goods and the remaining goods are flown into the again to society in the form of public works in the form of needy persons any orphans that is welfare of the society only he will respend on the uh, people that is called redistribution <coughs> the third variety uh, given by karl polani that is called trade so according to him trade is nothing but uh, connected that means giving and taking uh, connected on the basis of 
principles of supply and demand uh, supply and demand so market exchange exists only uh, when there is a standard monetary systems so all the societies which are having the monetary systems or uh, currency for exchange that we call as a trade oriented so trade is further divided into three types of trades gift to trade so gift to trade is nothing but we can see <coughs> gift to trade is nothing but uh, you know here the giving and taking is uh, takes place to uh, you know uh, enforce the uh, reciprocal relationships already existing relationship but they might not be a uh, relatives but they have certain kind of relationship that was uh, existed since their forefathers so this kind of situation so this kind of uh, reels for reinforcing the existing relationship between the non relatives persons uh, in the form of giving and taking of goods or any kind of ceremonial objects that uh, ceremonial objects means that is non utilitarian objects it may be utilitarian objects that is consumable goods may be giving and taking takes place or as ceremonial object uh, which increasing the status esteem and etc this kind of uh, goods may be uh, giving and taking takes places in simple societies these are all constituted under gift to trade so not only that so the prestations also prestations uh, presentations are uh, uh, gifts which are all given as part of life circle uh, ceremonies for suppose one of your relatives whom uh, there is a birthday party is going on there is a marriage ceremony going on so we will go to that party uh, we will go to for the ceremony with some kind of gifts in the other occasion in our own home there is a marriage ceremony is going on the same party he will come to that occasion and he will pay the re, uh, you know he will pay the uh, gift that is repaying the gift that is called prestations so all the prestations uh, that is associated with life cycle ceremonies they comes under the part of gift to trade so the classical examples of potlash where the potlash giver he will distribute the goods to the guests that is nothing but a example of gift to trade and marriage time uh, we are supporting the daughter's father uh, by giving certain kind of money or certain kind of uh, physical goods those are all comes under the part of gift to trade only and next one administrative trade so to discuss the administrative trade you can uh, imagine a uh, situation which was faced in india before 1991 reforms so in india before this time period the form of trade is nothing but administrative trade to establish a production unit such as factory any kind of inventory they must take the uh, you know license they uh, in the license they have to tell that how oh, what type of goods are produced what type of goods how much quantity to be produced what kind of uh, how much price to be fixed that means the production distribution and consumption what kind of goods are suitable for the uh, citizens of india everything is decided by the administrative units that means to establish a company to uh, to produce the quantity of how many quantity of goods and what kind of goods are produced everything decided by the government agencies or government administrative departments so the example of india before 1991 and uss are also the communist countries they will decide what kind of goods to be used by the people and how much quantity or uh, what price to be fixed everything dictated to the uh, corporate uh, these kind of things are administrative trade so market trade means it is absolutely like a, a modern day urban urban markets so in delhi maharashtra hyderabad bangalore so we saw every region is famous for one type of particular market so here the buyer and the seller meet the buyer uh, the sellers are present in the market buyers go there and they will uh, they will purchase the goods by using a currency so currency as a medium of exchange so in this kind of uh, market uh, market system so what kind of goods are produced that is the discretion of discretionary of the companies so for a good which is high demand among the people that kind of goods are highly produced and less demanded goods are uh, you know less valued goods by the people are less produced thereby the market system means the places where goods are sold the buyers and the sellers are meet so this buying entire trade is carried on the by using medium of exchange 
so uh, the prices the prices are the uh, means of or price, prices are the functions of the uh, market system so this kind of profit and loss demand and supply the locus uh, uh, that is called marketplace where this uh, actual trade is occurring everything we can uh, call as a uh, market trade it is mostly monetized societies they follow it so monetized society means everything they calculated in the units of currency so for every transaction they do by using the money or currency that is called market trade so this is the karl polyani concept however uh, shahlins and service uh, services they made uh, three kind of subdivisions within the reciprocity given by karl polyani so the basis for their subdivision is nothing but the close relationship between the parties involved so the close relationship close relationships between the parties involved so when there is a, a group of people who are all connected by certain relation that is household so household means all the lineage people all the joint family members all the nuclear family members so there is a always uh, giving and taking place of goods that is occurs so if between occurring these two people what kind of exchange we to be called so the household further extension is in what lineage lineage means our fathers brothers sister, uh, you know siblings and our uh, fathers uh, you know uh, these kind of uh, fathers brothers uh, children and uh, our fathers father so this is the way everybody is connected through common blood so this is one unit we can uh, consider as uh, one type of uh, exchange another unit is nothing but in a village there are so many households are there so many lineages are there but there is no direct relationship between this lineages or clan members so different clans when lineages when they exchange goods and services in a village that is another type of exchange so according to uh, shahlins and services so in a tribe there are so many villages okay uh, in, in in the tribe level if village to village between the villages if the exchange occurs that is called third variety the first variety is nothing but generalized reciprocity the first variety is nothing but generalized reciprocity the second one is nothing but at the village level that is called balanced reciprocity at the tribe level it is called negative reciprocity negative reciprocity now we will see how it is going to be happen so generalized reciprocity already uh, we know that generalized reciprocity occurs among the uh, same household members same lineage members same clan members that means already there is, there, there exists a close relationship between the members of uh, reciprocity in this kind of general reciprocity so here the major thing is uh, you know to enforce the already existing relationship here the uh, the giver gives the gift but the receiver has no obligation to repay the gift for suppose a grandfather gives a gift of car or some kind of bike to the grandchildren there is no obligation of the grandchildren to repay another gift to the grandfather so these kind of things that means already uh, the transactions the reciprocity occurs between the known uh, you know relative persons that we call as a generalized reciprocity here there is no obligation of repaying the gift that is the first thing so they, they never specify the value of the gift to be repaid or the time of gift to be repaid so these kind of things we call as a generalized reciprocity which comes under in the form of sharing hospitality help gift and generosity so generally parents giving uh, goods or gifts to the children comes under this kind of uh, exchange and next so there is one example from the tribal society the bushmans of kalahari desert so bushmans of kalahari desert uh, they were hunters and gatherers so these hunters and gatherers when they hunt the animal so this entire animal meat they divide into four parts part 1 part 2 part 3 and part 4 so the first part of the meat it goes to the actual the persons involved in the hunt and uh, the yaro uh, yaro givers so some persons might not involved in the hunting process but they helped in the hunting process by giving by giving the tools such as bows and arrows so because uh, their uh, capital is present inside the production so the uh, yaro givers 
so the yaro givers uh, owners of the yaro as well as the persons involved in the hunt it will go to the first part the second part is goes to the the kinsman who took the part of hunting process that is the second part so some of the persons actually present inside the hunt some others they present as in the form of uh, giving the arrows uh, bows and arrows so the real hunters their kinsman receiving the second portion of the meat so the third portion of the meat it will go to the visitors of this hunting process or sharing process fourth uh, pro, uh, fourth uh, part of the meat it will go to the non participants here you can see that so they are giving some share to the non participant so will this non participants have the obligation of repaying the meat to this uh, you know hunters means there is no so this is the way uh, generalized reciprocity this uh, bushmans of kalahari desert they follow generalized reciprocity so here giving uh, they give it but they never expect in return so the affection love and to enforce the already existing bonds they perform this kind of generalized reciprocity so next one you can see balanced reciprocity so balanced reciprocity it it occurs between the known parties in a village so one uh, one clan people known to the another clan people because they grown they they born they grown and they played together so everybody uh, known to other in a village so balanced reciprocity means here so giver also receive the gift from the receiver so they specify the value of the gift they specify the time of repayment here it create a new relationships creates a new relationships between the known persons so generally the trade between bushman and taswana of africa islets this kind of balanced reciprocity bushman give whatever the uh, meat or skins or ivory they collected as part of their hunting process to the taswana agriculturists taswana agriculturists they reciprocate by giving the agriculture grains uh, pulses cereals to the bushman this is the way equality that means if they give the uh, good value they will pay the good amount of agriculture grains that means equality existing between the givers and the receivers so there is no uh, inequality in the term of quantity so equal equal weight they will pay for bushman product to the tasawan products this is the way balanced reciprocity here giving and taking is the mandatory so the receiver must repay something so that is equal in value they will specify time of repayment so the second example is nothing but silent trade and dumb barter which we already examined as part of weddas of sri lanka and sinhalis the weddas place the forest produce in front of the house of sinhalis sinhalis they will collect that uh, the produce placed by the uh, this weddas people and later they will place their own products agriculture products or iron 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 tools and etc this is the way silent trade or dumb trade between weddas of sri lanka simang of malaya and rajis of uttar pradesh these are all the examples of balanced reciprocity so a third example you can see that kola exchange uh, occurs among the trobri hunters islanders so where chiefs are exchanging ceremonial object the partners are uh, the followers of each chief they exchange the utilitarian objects uh, by following the barter system so here they will pay uh, equal amount or equal value of the goods for the partners this is the way we call balanced reciprocity occurs among the simple societies and third or uh, last one among the sahirins and services concept that is negative reciprocity here so one village and another village one village people trading with another village people or one tribe trading with another tribe or a tribe trading with non tribe a trading with uh, non non tribe so these kind of situations they involve certain kind of uh, negative reciprocity that means one pro, one party try to uh, one party try to gain as much as possible on the expense of another party so this is the way where the classical example is nothing but navajo red indians while uh, they exchanging their goods to the white man 
they quote these red indian goods are higher prices and they treat the white man goods are less prices this is the way these red indians nawajo red indians try to uh, gain more uh, from the white people so here among the uh, this pastoral people so uh, theft of cattle of the another party or uh, during the night raids they will take some of the cattle from other party so these are all the best examples we can see uh, from new year's dinka kirgis and kazik pastoral uh, people so these are also comes under the negative reciprocity that means they apply even cheating methods also so this is called negative reciprocity generally occurs between unknown parties generally occurs between unknown parties so this is all about sharing and service concept of so uh, exchanging the gifts or various forms of reciprocity so thank you very much guys we will see in another video uh, another topic